everybody. Hope you all are doing well and staying safe at home these days. I'm out working in the field as usual. I was kind of going about my day and I thought I was doing some kind of cool stuff and I was, wanted, was wanting to elaborate on my last video where I talked with you guys about deer antlers and elk and elk and elk collars and how we use these GPS collars for our research and what they look like and what they do. And I thought, here I am out in the field, I'm actually trying to put out these collars rather than just talk about them. I'm trying to take them and put them on an animal. Far easier said than done. But I was wanting to maybe make a little video, show you guys how we do that, talk about it a little bit, the equipment we use, it's pretty cool, and how it all comes together. So basically, right now, I am in Magdalena, New Mexico, sitting in a ground line. It is 3.30 in the afternoon, pretty hot, pretty toasty, and I, you know, you'd think it would, and I was in a house somewhere, but actually I'm sitting in this ground blind. So basically what a ground blind is, it's a dome-like structure that has about a bunch of poles like a tent, and I sit in it, and it keeps me out of view, keeps the sun off of me, luckily. Um... It let, makes, there's some camouflage on it so the animals can't see me. If you're ever trying to play hide and seek, I highly recommend ground blinds. They come in very handy. So I'm in the ground blind across from a food bait site, which is just about right there, just across, across the way, about 30 yards, not super far. Um, it's, so basically what a bait site is, is we went out, we took a bunch of alfalfa, which it's... Uh, we use it for horses a lot, and it's kind of like a green twiggy, tastes really good to animals, good feed. So we take a whole bunch, we put it out there, and it attracts the elk. That's our plan. We want to attract the elk to this spot. Then I can shoot them with a tranquilizer dart, and we can put a collar on them. So alfalfa, it really does the trick, because to them it's like candy. You know, it tastes a lot better than some of the stuff they find out here in the desert. Um, so they really like it. Um, you know, it's like I said, it's to us... The equivalent would be candy or something, maybe ice cream. So when it's there, they try and find it. So it works out really well. So typically, I try and sit in here as quiet as I can and wait for the right opportunity for some elk to come along. Maybe I can shoot them with a dart. I'm not going to do it right now, though. That way I can try and let, describe all this to you guys and tell you what's going on. So the way I go about doing this is I sit in here. I have my dart gun ready to go. This here is my dart gun. This is a new dart gun, P-N-E-U, it's kind of it's a brand. And let me just walk you through some of the pieces we have here. So I have my scope, it has my crosshairs in it. This is what I aim through and look through, so I can try and take a good shot. I got my barrel, which projects the dart. I have the CO2 cartridge, that's this, right, that's this portion right here. For those of you that don't know what CO2 is, it is very, very pressurized air. Think of like a balloon. When you guys inflate a balloon, you have all that air in there, but when you open it, you go, right? Because it's all in there really pressurized compared to the outside. A lot of air in a little area. That's what this is, but much more powerful. So if you ever have one of these, you want to be careful with the CO2. So this feeds into this tube here, which pressurizes, and it lets you put the amount of pressure in that you need for the dart that you're firing, the distance that you're shooting it. I load the dart through the back end here, so I have my plunger. This is the barrel right here. It's an incredibly long barrel. And so I have my barrel here. So I'm not going to do it now, but I would just want to show you guys. So I just take the dart and I slide it right in there. And then I will take it and I will close it up as tight as I can so that nothing is nothing can escape. So once I see an animal and I'm gonna when I want to shoot at it, I adjust the pressure that I need. So I'll take my rangefinder, and I need to understand how far these animals are. So this gun can shoot about 40 yards at the very most, right? You, if, you're, if it's further than 40 yards, you need to wait and let them get closer. Ideally, you want to be as close as you can, that way you can make a really good shot. So to help me do this, I have a rangefinder. It's a very fancy little piece of equipment. I look through here. It's got a little laser underneath. I look through click the button at what I'm aiming at uh, and it'll tell me how far that is so once I understand how far it is with my rangefinder I come back here to my right to my dart gun and I adjust the pressure accordingly 
So if I'm shooting 40 yards, I'll have about 11 and a half pressure. If I'm shooting 30 yards, I'll have about nine pressure. If I'm shooting 20 yards, I'll have about seven. Anything closer than that, I just need to adjust, you know, my aim and whatnot. So I'll come in here, this little plus and minus to handle. And I can do plus to increase my pressure. And it tells me how much pressure I have here on this little dial. Really handy. You know, this gun is great to use. It's fun to use, honestly. So then once all that's said and done, I take aim and I pull the trigger. And hopefully I can make as good a shot as I possibly can. So when you're shooting a dart with a, tran with a tranquilizer dart, you want to aim for the muscles. You know, these are my, we all have muscles, just like um, us, just like animals, we all have muscles. So my, you know, these are my muscles here. I got muscles, you know, here on my chest. I have less muscles here than most people. Um, but then, you, know, we want, you want to aim for the muscle group because the, the tranquilizer will seep into the muscles, get them really sleepy, get them really tired, like they've, you know, they've been out playing all day, and that's where they lay down and they just go out, go to sleep very deeply, which is perfect for us. So, onto the dart. This is my tranquilizer dart that I use. So, when I was growing up, I thought all tranquilizer darts looked like the ones from Jurassic Park, when they use them on the T-Rexes, and they have the big, feathery, bushy ends. Apparently that's not the case. I was a little disappointed. But now I'm here telling you guys, early on, this is what a tranquilizer dart looks like. Sorry if I spoiled it. So I load the tranquilizer from the very top with the syringe. This one's already loaded, and it, it's held right here in this blue portion. All right, it's all held in there. So this back portion is very important to what we do. It's called the telemetry dart. So what this does is it emits um, radio signals. So what after you dart an animal, you know, it startles them a little bit. They'll go and they'll run at the trees and you leave them alone so that way they can get tired. They can be by themselves and they can fall asleep. They don't get all excited. This telemetry portion, it allows us to go in afterwards and find them. So if you lose sight of the animal, it doesn't just go and disappear and you're not able to find it. We use an antenna and we listen for these radio signals and it helps us find it. I use a magnet to turn on the dart. So when you, you just swipe it, it's pretty fancy. You see, I just swipe it there. There you go. You don't know if you can see it, but it is flashing blue, flashing blue now. It's a little bright, sorry if you guys can't see it, but that lets me know it's on and it's transmitting these signals. So that means I'm good to go, load it in my gun and shoot. Takes about 10 minutes for the drug to, for the uh, tranquilizer to work. Gets them very sleepy, very tired, and it lets us do our things. Now, after the animal's been darted, we go in, we put a collar on it, we take samples like blood, if we have samples for DNA, samples for disease, and we take a tooth to age them. So, if, unlike our teeth, and here are our teeth, elk have very cool teeth, right? So we can take one of their teeth, and we can we take a tooth, and we can cut it in half, and it's like a tree. You can look at the inside of the tooth, and you can look at the rings, and it will tell you how old that animal is. It's like As I said, it's very similar to trees. They get one more ring for each year of life. Uh, that's very critical to what we do, because with cows, the female elk, you can't age them by just looking at them. You have to use the tooth. With the males, bulls, you can have you have the antlers, which they with depending on how big they are and the points, you can get an idea of how old they are. So it, being able to age them from teeth is very helpful for our research. So guys, that's pretty much it for today. Um, it's getting hotter in here. Hopefully, I'll have some luck later on. But that's pretty much everything I have and everything I'm using for trying to dart elk. I have some hope that I'll have some luck this afternoon. We'll see how it goes. But regardless, I'm sure you guys will see me again. I'll try and find some other cool things that I think you'll appreciate. There's a lot of them that we use and a lot of cool things that we do. So I'm sure I'll be able to find something. So thank you for your time. I'll see you guys later. Bye.